So let's see Addison's disease or hypofunction of the adrenal glands. Adrenocortical insufficiency or hypofunction of the adrenal cortex may be from a primary cause which is referred to as Addison's disease or a secondary cause which is lack of pituitary ACTH secretion. In Addison's disease, amounts of all three classes of adrenal corticosteroids, namely the glucocorticoids, the mineralocorticoids, and the androgens are reduced. In secondary adrenocortical insufficiency, corticosteroids and androgen levels are deficient, but mineralocorticoids are usually normal. ACTH deficiency may be caused by pituitary disease or suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary axis because of the administration of exogenous corticosteroids. The most common cause of Addison's disease in the United States is an autoimmune response. Adrenal tissue is destroyed by antibodies against the patient's own adrenal cortex. Although tuberculosis causes Addison's disease worldwide, it is now an uncommon cause in the United States. Other causes include infarction, fungal infections, example histoplasmosis, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS, and metastatic cancer. Iatrogenic Addison's disease may be due to adrenal hemorrhage, often in relation to anticoagulant therapy, chemotherapy, ketoconazole or nosoral therapy for AIDS, which is an antifungal, or bilateral adrenalectomy for adrenal tumors. Because manifestations do not tend to become evident until 90% of the adrenal cortex is destroyed, the disease is often advanced before it is diagnosed. The manifestations have a very slow or insidious onset and includes progressive weakness, fatigue, weight loss, and anorexia as the primary features. Increased ACTH causes the striking feature of bronze-colored skin or hyperpigmentation. It is seen primarily in sun-exposed areas of the body, at pressure points, over joints, and in the creases, especially the palm or creases. Other manifestations of adrenal insufficiency are orthostatic hypotension, hyponatremia, salt craving, which is very significant, hyperkalemia, nausea and vomiting, and diarrhea. Irritability and depression may also occur. Addisonian crisis. Patients with adrenocortical insufficiency are at risk for acute adrenal insufficiency or Addison's crisis. Is a life-threatening emergency caused by insufficient adrenocortical hormones or a sudden sharp decrease in these hormones. Addisonian crisis is triggered by stress from infection, surgery, or psychological distress, sudden withdrawal of corticosteroid hormone therapy, which is often done by a patient who lacks knowledge of the importance of this therapy, adrenal surgery, or sudden pituitary gland destruction. During acute adrenal insufficiency, severe manifestations of glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid deficiencies are exhibited, including hypotension, particularly postural, tachycardia, dehydration, hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, hypoglycemia, fever, weakness, and confusion. GI manifestations include severe vomiting, diarrhea, and pain in the abdomen. Pain may occur in the lower back or legs. Hypotension may lead to shock. Circulatory collapse associated with adrenal insufficiency is often unresponsive to the usual treatment, which is vasopressors and fluid replacement. Adrenal insufficiency is characterized by depressed serum and urinary cortisol levels. ACTH levels will be increased in primary adrenal insufficiency and decreased in secondary disease. Diagnostic studies. Adrenal insufficiency is characterized by depressed serum and urinary cortisol levels. 
ACTH levels will be increased in primary adrenal insufficiency and decreased in secondary disease. Primary adrenal insufficiency is confirmed when the cortisol levels fail to rise over the basal levels in the ACTH stimulation test. In um, second, in normally the cortisol levels will double within the first hour. In primary insufficiency, the cortisol response is absent or decreased, and in secondary insufficiency, the response is increased. Urine levels of free cortisol are low, as it is in the urine level of aldosterone. Other abnormal lab findings in some cases include hyperkalemia, hypochloremia, hyponatremia, hypoglycemia, anemia, and increased BUN levels. An ECG may show low voltage and peaked T waves caused by hyperkalemia. CT scans and MRI may be used to identify causes other than autoimmune, including tumors, fungal infections, tuberculosis, or adrenal calcification. Collaborative care. Treatment of adrenocortical insufficiency is focused on management of the underlying cause when possible. The mainstay of treatment for the adrenocortical insufficiency is hormone therapy. Hydrocortisone, the most commonly used form of hormone therapy, has both glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoid properties. During situations associated with stress, the glucocorticoid dosage must be increased to prevent Addisonian crisis. Mineralocorticoid replacement with fludrocortisone or fluoronef is administered daily. Salt in the diet needs to be increased. Addisonian crisis. Addisonian crisis is a life-threatening life emergency necessitating aggressive treatment. Treatment must be directed towards shock management and high-dose hydrocortisone replacement. With high doses of steroids, initiate intravenous hydrogen receptor blockers. Large volumes of normal saline solution and phyposyndextrose are administered to reverse hypotension and electrolyte imbalances until the blood pressure returns to normal. Treatment should also include to treat hyperkalemia and hypoglycemia.